right, now that the heavy lifting is done, we come to the fun part. <laughs> and that is the turning of the lips, splitting of the ears, splitting of the eyelids, all those good little details that drive you crazy. All right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to see about turning one of the ears. We're going to turn this ear right here, okay? So, let's get situated here. Okay, I'm going to use various knives for this. I'm going to start with the scalpel. And as I go along, I'm going to put one finger under the ear. And my, other, my thumb and middle finger will be pulling in opposite directions on the skin. This will allow me to cut the connective tissue and pull the two halves apart. In other words, pull the skin away from the cartilage. Now this scalpel blade I'm using is, is a little on the dull side, which is good. I have a tendency of going through, which I happen to do that on the back leg of this particular fox. I'm not proud of it, but shit happens. I've been doing this for 53 years. Every now and then, I'll do something stupid, like use a scalpel during skinning, and I'll put a freaking hole in the skin. I hate that. I'm so pissed when I do that. Good thing it didn't happen on camera. It would have been extraordinarily blue. And I don't mean it because I was sad. I mean, my language would have been blue. Dark blue. Navy blue. Navy blue. Yeah, like a sailor. But anyway, we go along like so. Now, there are no... There, are, there is a small ear opener that, that is made for a small game like this. I don't know if it'll go down to an animal the size of a, of a fox, but I'm sure it would work on like a coyote, for instance. I had a nifty little tool, and I just can't find it. It doesn't seem to be in my toolbox where it should be, so I don't know where the heck it's gone to. Now, when you get down to a certain point, you just start working all around the ear, freeing up as much of the... Uh, connective tissue from the surface as you possibly can, all the while being careful not to cut through the ear, the front or the cartilage, okay? You want to be well aware of where you're at and what you're doing. And after a while you reach a certain point, I'll take a dowel, a little dowel, well, good sized dowel. It's my medium dowel. And I'll run it up into the ear like so. This will allow me an interior surface to kind of pull the ear along, like so. And this gives me a little something, I would say on the inside, but it's on the outside looking in that I can work on. See, I'm putting tension on it. Let me get this focus here. I'm putting some tension here. And this is more than I can do with just my fingers alone. Now you notice I've gone to a, a different knife. I've gone to my, my curved, uh, curved blade bird's beak paring knife. And this will allow me to get in close without the risk of cutting through. I will adjust this, its position in the ear as I go, pulling down on the skin as I do. Now just remember, this, the foxes are a little on the greasy side. They have a good size ear, so you really want to go along carefully. Make sure you have a good grip. Um, in the case of like doing the flushing, uh, sometimes I wear gloves, sometimes I don't. I'm just trying to avoid the greasiness on my hands. Just makes a mess. As I get skin separated, I reposition the dowel. I get in and I put a little tension on it. And you can see the white forming right here. Let me see if I can get that on camera here. 
Yeah, you see just a little bit of the white as you're pulling the skin. It just puts tension on the skin. Allows you to slice through and cut rather easily. I'm going to continue doing this all the way to the tip. And when I return, the ear will be fully turned. Okay, now I'm just going to show you something. I've got, I still have the dowel in the ear, and I have it sitting on the table, flat on the table, so that it's creating a nice little, um, kind of like a turning beam within the ear, okay? And with that, as I, as I gently push down on the skin, as I'm separating said skin, now bear in mind, gray fox have got rounded ears, okay? The ears are not very pointed, not like a red fox and certainly not like a coyote. They're more rounded, kind of like the ears of a raccoon are rounded. But you go along, and we're really approaching the tip right now of the ear. Okay, now as I bring the skin down, I will then adjust it up and bring it down onto the dowel again. Sometimes to avoid the slippage, you can use a little cornmeal. Cornmeal. I would not use borax. That would be too... Oh, that would be too drying on the skin. That's more of a desiccant. It will dry the skin out. A cornmeal will allow you to grab the skin and it will absorb some of the grease and the moisture. So cornmeal is a good, is a good uh, uh, source for uh, uh, a product to apply to the skin while you're skinning to help get a grip on things here. You can see now we're going along. I'm going to go along the side of the ear now. I want to make sure I get right to the edge. Again, as with all the mammals I skin, I'll get as far as I dare with the skin in the raw condition. And then I will redo it again after I get it back from the tannery. Whoops, a daisy. Right now, we're just we're real close to the tip of the ear at this point. There's just a little more to go. I'm going to just kind of pinch it between my thumb and forefinger, the skin. Just pinching it between the thumb and forefinger, kind of rolling the skin as I go along. And that little bit of white that's exposed, that's where the tension is being put on both the front and rear skin, or I should say the cartilage and the back ear skin. Remember, the cartilage is attached to the front. Okay, I'm going to put the dowel back in the ear and continue working it. Okay, we're back in the ear with the dowel. Any tension you put on the skin will expose that little connective area to, and it will show up as a white band. And that's simply the connection between the rear ear skin and the front where the ear cartilage is attached. Now many, many, many times the tip of the ear will dry out just a little bit. So you can have your, your spray bottle with some water or Chemol 4 solution which is a good relaxer and it will penetrate the skin real well and you can spritz that. The thing to, to, to learn is when to stop turning so that you don't blow open the tip of the ear with your knife. Now I'm going down along the side of the ear. 
All right, I think we've about got this. Okay, this is all I need to do for the ear in the raw state. Okay, that's it. I'm going to turn it right side out for just a minute. At least the ear, anyway. Here we go. Let's get this turned right side out. If we can. Where are you, little ear? Where are you, little ear? I'm going to put the uh, dowel up into the ear. So help me turn it. Yeah. See, that's, that's really, that's well turned. That's darn near right out to the very tip. Okay, that's a little big for that. So I'm going to go with the tip of the sharpening steel just to expose the tip of the ear. Boop! And there we are. We've got a nicely turned ear at this point, okay? A very, very nicely turned ear, okay? Pretty far out to the edge as we need to be. Now, this will be brought further out to the edge after it comes back from the tannery, and the skin has been toughened up. Right now, the skin is on the tender side because it's raw, and I would rather not go through it. So, that will be continued, continued splitting after the skin comes back from the tannery. And I, I say this all the time. Once the skin is toughened up through the pickling and tanning stages, it will release from itself a whole heck of a lot easier. There's a few little other connections here. This is the center of the ear that attaches to the forehead. I just want to take this along here, like so. Just like so. Go gently with it. Be gentle with it. On the other side, you have, of course, the third, or uh, this, what's called the secondary auricular cartilage. And on, a, on an ear, that's the little pocket that forms on the outside edge of, of, an, of many mammal ears. Deer have it in that it's a little pit just above the V-notch on the deer's ear. But on dogs and cats, uh, raccoons too will exhibit it. It will be a little pocket. This right here is the secondary auricular cartilage, also called the ear pocket. Um, its function is still up for debate, but it's basically, I believe the theory where it helps to collect sound, kind of like a radar dish, and bounces it into the ear proper. It, it can get the sounds coming towards it and kind of bounce it out and around and down into the ear. But this needs to be split as well. And again, I will do that a little bit in the raw state, but mostly that will be done after tanning. It will be salted, the moisture will be drained out, the ear will be fine. Now you can see where that's a little dry right there towards the tip. Take my little bit of a Camo 4 solution, spray it on, work it into the skin. And magically, well not magically, it's what it's designed to do. It's designed to penetrate. Makes water wetter. It's a relaxer, it's a degreaser, a mild degreaser. It's all good stuff. And this will allow you to continue turning. Now this is the, sec this is the opposite ear from the first one. I did go along and open up the flap, the ear pocket. The, I separated the secondary auricular cartilage on the first ear. I did do that. Did it off camera. It's just a lot easier than trying to get it in focus on the camera. I'll show what it looks like after it's when it's been split. And I'm just constantly going down the side of this ear. I'm 
trying to get it right to the very edge as much as I can. Let's check it again. Okay, I have a little more to go. I, when you press it between your, your thumb and forefinger, you can feel how much more skin needs to be turned. And I could feel all this area here, which is the tip is actually located right here. It's not here. If I keep going here, I'm going to go through because this is not the tip. That's off the side just a bit. Here's the tip right here. So I will reinsert the dowel and get it into the area that is the true tip of the ear and continue. And I'll give it a little spritz. You can see as you pull down the skin how it dries a little bit. That a little bit there. Moisten it up. Kind of like I'm shooting pool. I'm chalking the stick, as it were. I just want to make sure this is at the tip and not off to the side. There we go. That's, what, that's what's important. You have to know where you're, where you're at. You have to locate yourself just right. to continue until I reach the tip. Okay, where I'm at right now, this is the the section of the ear that holds the joint ear cartilage, the dual ear cartilage, the secondary auricular cartilage. I want to outline it with the knife. I want to go along, make sure I'm getting all the right spots. You want to follow the juncture of the cartilage on itself. There we go. Right there. There's the ear pocket. Right there. Right there. We get that open, we're good. There we go. You just want to do this carefully. Once you understand the anatomy of the ear, getting to this point then becomes especially easy. Okay, now that secondary auricular cartilage has been split. Okay, it's been split. There's the flap right there. Now I'm working the Chemol 4 into the tip of the ear at this point. Still trying to moisten the tip. The tip on this ear is just a little bit dry. So I'm still working the tip. You see it's a, it's a little misshapen and still kind of flat at the top. Well, I want to get that, I want to continue turning and I'm kind of like pushing against the ear cartilage, which is the front of the ear, with my thumb, pulling down on the rear ear skin with my index finger, and separating as I go, very gently, very slowly. I do not want to pop a hole in the ear. I'll go back in with the dowel rod again. Get in there. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. nice, nice, nice. It's starting to let go of itself. You'd be surprised how this will, the Chemo Force solution will soak through. The ear tip is so thin, it can soak right through the skin. 
This is a real good Knobloch product. I really like Chemol 4. You hear me re refer to it an awful lot when I'm skinning and cleaning skins. When I wash my wet tan skins when they come back from the tannery, I soak them in a solution of a little bit of salt and a little bit of Chemol 4. Salt maintains the pH. Chemo 4 washes the oils off of the hair, makes them nice and clean. All right, I got to be very careful with this tip. She's exceptionally dry, so I'm going to turn it right side out and see where I'm at and check it that way. Okay, what I can see here on this fox's ear, this ear, the tip has got some damage. She's got little, little bites. No missing pieces, but there's a lot of scar tissue. When they play, when they fight, they'll grab each other's ears. It's like chick fight for foxes. They grab each other's ears and they, they pull their hair. But they grab the ears. See, this ear is a little more blunt than the opposite ear. In fact, very this ear is extraordinarily rounded. There is no true, what you would call a tip to this ear. All right, here's the ear with the tip damage. This is the ear that's in good shape, that's got the more higher peaked rounded ear. And from the back, here it is again. From the back, you can see the misshapen ear. This is the one that we've been working on just now, where I said it looks like there's a little damage to that ear. And here's the other one. Like I say, gray foxes do not have pointed ears, but when they get a little bit of damage, you can see the difference between the two ears very easily. It's slight, it's slight, but when you take them apart and you put them inside out, it becomes extraordinarily noticeable. It's like Ducky says, I'll know more when I get her on the table. Okay, now to keep those ear skins from drying out, I keep them turned right side out, and I'm going to proceed to the eyelids, the lips, and then the nostrils. Okay, I'm going to use a dull scalpel to start this. I'm going to cut down into the heavy meat around the eye, then I'm going to start paring it. Drawing down with my, you know what, hold on, I can't feel a bloody thing. All right, took off the glove. The gloves have come off. Now, what happened was the, pla the, the nitrile, the plastic, is just sliding over the, uh, over the, the membrane. I, I, I really, I need to be able to grip it a bit. As I separate the membrane, from the skin, I pull down with my thumb, drawing it toward the eyelid. It's just like doing the eyelid on a deer, except it's a lot smaller. It's even more fun when you do something like a mink or a squirrel. Yes, I split the eyelids on mink and squirrels, gray squirrels, Red squirrel, chipmunks, doesn't matter. It's got to be done. Okay, now we're down. This is the membrane of the eyelid here, the inner membrane of the eyelid. You can see that. And right here is the eyelid proper. Both gloves have come off. I'm going to get down. I'm not going to split all the way to the very edge at this point. Again, after the skin has been toughened up through tanning, I will continue splitting the eyelids all the way open. But for now, I want to get down so that the salt can penetrate and do its job, do a number on these eyelids. The membrane, the eyelid skin. Go all the way around to the front corner of the eye. I 
want to separate it. Be real careful here, folks. The less pressure you apply to the with the with the knife to the skin, the less pressure you apply there, the less chance you'll have of going through. Famous last words, I hope not. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. The bottom of the lid will be split the same way. I just I want to go to something else right now. I'm going to take my ceramic cone. The same cone I use for deer. I use it on the otter. I'm going to use it here on the foxy. I'm going to use it on the eye of the foxy lady. And what I want to do, I want to use this to utilize just to get the heavy meat away from the eyes very carefully. Some folks are comfortable using a Skype knife on this. I'm comfortable with the Skype knife after the skin is tanned and it's really toughened up a bit. But on a raw skin, mm, not very comfortable with it. I came up in this field using paring knives and, and the like. Some folks are comfortable using scalpels for this as well. Not me. All right. Now I'm just going to take a scissor. Oh, I'll just pull this away. And I will use a scissor to trim away some of the rest of this here, this loose tissue. Like so. There we go. And that's continued. Again, you want to, want to be aware of the feeler hairs. All right? While their faces are not as... <coughs> Uh, a mass with feeler hairs as that of an otter, for example, they do have some. They have feeler hairs over the eyes, and then of course the whisker beds down on the, on the muzzle. But I just want to break up the heaviest meat <clears throat> and trim it away, just like so. Now I'm going to go around the eye and do the lower lid. Just as I did the upper. Okay. We go in like so, just until we pierce the membrane that lays attached to the skin, lays on top of the skin. Once that's penetrated, and we can start rolling and separating like butterfly and a teeny tiny shrimp. A brine shrimp, no. <laughs> okay, there we are. Now we're going good now. The biggest thing about wearing gloves is that you're not transferring heat to the raw skin, and this is a raw skin, and you do have very warm hands, so I just, I wanna do this as quickly as possible. I want to get in and out. It's like going grocery shopping. I want to get in, I want to get out. Like weekend grocery shopping, I want to get in and, in and out. Now, don't get dirty. Get your minds out of the gutter, children. <gasps> we'll do this until we get all the way down to the eyelid. There's a mistake right there. I'm going to show it. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to make it. a repair for something stupid like that. I know exactly what happened. I happened to look up at the view screen on my camera to make sure we were, in, we were in frame and in focus. I let my mind wander. I'm going to cut part of this membrane away. Okay. Now I've got a little piece of membrane on my fingertip here. 
Now here's, here's, here's Using my part. tweezer, my forceps, I simply push the hairs, the fur, out of the hole, out of the cut. I want to make sure it's on the outside. I've got my plastic Joe Combs flushing ball here. I'm going in through the mouth so I can get a good positioning. Now I'm going to draw this skin together like so. I still have that little piece of membrane somewhere here. Oh, okay, it fell off onto the skin here. All right. I want to make sure I have that separate. Now, here comes the trick. One of the first things I did, made sure I trimmed away the rest of the eyelid membrane from the area of the, where the skin was cut. Now I'm going to draw the skin together, back on itself. Push the hairs to the outside. I'm going to give a little squirt Camel 4 solution to help me. And wet the hairs. If the hairs are wet, they will stay away from each other. They will stay on the outside. Now slowly I'm going to work the skin together with the forceps, like so. Pinching it together as I go. As I draw it close, I want to hold it, because the next step is a little weird. I'm going to prep some Tech Bond. Tech Bond SI Black. All right. Make sure it's down to the tip. Get the skin together. Make sure it's pressed down onto itself. Here I'm using the handle of the knife, doesn't matter. I'm going to get it moist so that it doesn't stick to my fingers, the skin. I want it to stick to itself, I don't want it to stick to my fingers. This is a little medical trick. CA glue is used in surgeries to reattach nerve endings. Can't suit your nerve endings. And that hole's been closed. I'm going to take a little bit of CA glue, my Tech Bond CA glue. I'm going to go over that opening like so. Let it set a few seconds. I'll take that little piece of trimmed membrane from the eye. I'm going to pull it out flat. I'm going to flatten it between my fingers. Stretch it thin as I go. See how thin this is now? Okay. Right now the skin is being held together. I'm going to give, make a little schmear. I'm going to flatten out that bead of CA glue. Continue to stretch this piece of membrane skin. I'm going to place this over the closed opening. Put a little puddle so I can wet my finger, keep my finger from sticking to the membrane. It's a little on the dry side. All right. Now, if this happened the right way, when I turn this over, this will be closed. And it's closed. 
How will this hold up during the tanning? It'll hold up just fine. I'm probably going to tan these skins myself and I'll make a notation on fox number two careful around the lower lids. Anyway, the uh, eyelids have been split. A cut has been sealed. You saw it. Live time. No goofing around. I'm just tapping with a little Chemo 4 solution. I just want to moisten the skin. Now you will see that that will that will take on quite a, a little bit of stiffness there, but and then if it comes apart during the pickling step, no matter. It's, it's not a big deal. I'm just doing a little flushing on the face right now. Okay. Now the opposite eyelid will be done exactly the same. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start splitting the lips at this point. And to split the lips, I draw down on the inner lip skin with my thumb and get the knife blade between the skin, the interior lip skin, and the interior facial skin. Let me get one of my paring knives for this. I feel more comfortable with a paring knife than I do with a scalpel. Especially on splitting. That's just me. If you're comfortable with your scalpel, by all means use it. You saw what happened. Normally I use a paring knife to split my eyelids, my ears. And don't let your mind wander. If at all possible, when you're doing this in your shop or your home, wherever you practice your taxidermy, unless you have a camera going and you're checking your your view screen and make sure you're in focus and that everything is in position properly and in frame. Just concentrate on what you're doing and you won't have to get colorful like me. Let me get a little better edge on here. Feels good, okay. There we go. And this goes all the way around the lips. All the way, now here's the, here's the whisker pad right here. Oops. This is the whisker pad right in this area here. So I'm gonna cut along beneath it. I'm gonna split this. And then I want to butterfly the lips down to their edges. All right, I've gone to a flat edge paring knife here. This is holding a better edge. I'm going to have to Regrind that other blade. It's not holding an edge very well. This is going nice now. See, we're going down past the whisker bed. Splitting. As I go along. And you split the lips just like butterfly in a shrimp. Like so. And you see how this is split now. And I'm going to go right to the edge of the lip skin. Okay. Same thing, with, uh, heading around the front of the muzzle. And then we'll do the same thing heading around the front of the muzzle.
right under the nose. Splitting and rolling the skin as I go so that it rolls down to the lips. Just like so. Now we can grab, as soon as you can, you want to grab that lip skin and start turning it. There we go. Beautifully. Beautifully, 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 beautifully. All right. Here's the whisker roots. It's the lip skin. Short stroke seems to work. But getting down and getting down carefully. If you do long strokes, you're liable to slice right through. Short strokes, you can control more of it. The non-stop rains of spring in Ohio. The rites of spring. April showers make everything really, really wet. Okay, we've got the one side of the face here split, the lips split, and that's what I want right there, you can see my finger under the lip skin. I'm going to continue to skin down the nose pad, and you can see how the skin is pulling on the nose pad. I'll cut that skin. I will not cut the skin. I want to cut that area where it's adhering and pulling. I'm right, back down to the center of the lips. Okay, here we go. Here. Now we've we've got the the lips split at the front. I'm going to go down. I'm, I'm going to split the the, uh, the nose pad. Okay. I'm going to go right down the middle with the scalpel. Split it. I want to make it as evenly as possible. If it's not exactly down the center, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. No one's going to smite you. You might smite yourself. But you want to separate those nostrils. The nostril cartilage. Okay, now, I'm going to skin around these just a little bit, just a touch. Then you'll be able to thin the cartilage, trim the cartilage away, I should say. But you want to get this around here like so. Like so. Very, 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 very gently. Real short, little short little strokes. Short, annoying little strokes. I'm going to put a little bit of Chemo 4 solution here and rub it in. Right now, we've got the nostrils separated on the inside. Okay? See how nice and, how nice and loosey-goosey the nose is? Turn it back, right back inside out again. Now we're going to go up, I'm trim some of this cartilage away, carefully, just paring it away, just paring this away, like so, and just going like so, paring it away. I then, I'm then going to take a small scissors, pardon my reach. I'm going to get in here, all right, I'm going to trim this away, I'm 
Wonderful. The heavy cartilage off of there. Get off my fingers, will you? Jeez Louise. All right, now, here's where we're at right now with the nose. You can see what we've got there, right there. The nose on the outside now. This can further be shaved down and whatnot. Split. Have the meat shaved away. You don't want to take away too much. You could take away more during the, the shaving after the skin has been pickled and you do the shaving. You separate separate these corn rows, <laughs> the whisker rows. Separate the rows of whisker pads. Now I'm not going to pluck the whiskers out of this. You can if you want to go crazy. I'm crazy enough. I don't need any more trips to crazy land. Thank you very much. But I am going to separate the rows. After this skin has been tanned, I will then separate in between the whiskers. I'm going to take my little scissor and I'm going to trim away the meat around this area just to meet with my little scissor. It's an iris scissor, I-R-I-S, iris scissor. So I'm pinch and shear away the meat. Try not to cut off the ends of the whisker roots. All right, that's one side of the face prepped and acceptable for tannery. Okay? We have the lip split. We've got the nostrils separated and split. The nostril wings can be further opened after the skin has gone through the tanning solution and the pickling. All right, I'm getting a little close. You can see what the heck I'm doing here. All right, see how that's been done. That's the nostrils, that's the nose pad under there. There it is on the outside. Okay, all right, we got the ears turned, we have one eye split. Let's focus this, shall we? Yes, let's. We have one eye split. We have one side of the whisker roots separated. Of the lips on one side of the face have been split. We're going to go down to the chin, do the same. It's the same thing all the way around, all the way down to the chin. And that's going to be continued off camera. Uh, as I go along, you see the skin puckering a little. It's getting a little dry. A little shot of Chemo 4. Rub that in a little bit. Moisten that son of a gun right up. It's the membrane on the inside of the skin that's drying up a little bit, okay? But I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the face. But that's it, that's, 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 that's it for doing the face. All righty. She's looking good. She's looking good, baby. Okay. All right, well. I've got a little more to go on her face to get her details all just right. Then she'll I'll remove the heavy uh, fat from the belly on my flushing beam. She'll be salted and hung up to dry. Uh, not fully dry, but I want to get her dry enough to where we'll draw the grease and everything out of the skin. Then she'll go into a pickle. I have to do, after the pickle, she'll be shaved on my round knife. After that, she'll go into a tan of Lutan, a tan solution using Lutan F, which is a very good tanning solution, a tanning product. After that, she'll uh, be rolled up, bagged, put in the freezer 
until her mannequin has been completed. And that's my job too. So I hope you were all able to get something out of this. I hope uh, we answered a few questions. Uh, I showed you how to make a boo-boo. I showed you how to repair a boo-boo. So I hope this uh, was, was informative enough for you all. Um, shows how to make a mistake and how to correct a mistake if it happens. So until next time, adios, amigos.